You're very welcome back to the programme. Well, there's a big academic conference about autism taking place in NUI Galway today. One of the key speakers has conducted research that shows that some children can recover from autism. And Professor Deborah Fine joins me now from our Galway studio. Uh, Professor Fine, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Um, first of all, can you, can you outline your research? When, when you say some children, what children can recover from autism? Yes, certainly. Um, we are doing research to demonstrate convincingly to people that individuals with a firm diagnosis of autism when they are in early childhood can sometimes uh, recover enough to really move off the spectrum and no longer show signs of autism and really be indistinguishable from typically developing children in terms of social functioning, language functioning, academics, uh, and we hope eventually in, in terms of adult adjustment to life. And, Professor, are these children recovering because something in their brain has changed or have they been trained to deal with their autism and to kind of get around the symptoms of autism? Well, I, I think they're both true. I think they have been trained to acquire skills and behaviours that they didn't have before and that, as a consequence, their brains are changing. Um, we, we are doing neuroimaging um, on the individuals who've recovered as well, so we hope to show whether there is something different in the way their brains are operating. Really, and with neuroimaging, I mean, d does the brain of a child with autism look different to the brain of a child without autism? Well, it does, but in pretty subtle ways. So there's, uh, there's about 25 years of research, much of it contradictory, showing that some of the brain structures tend to be larger, some of them tend to be smaller in children with autism, and that when they're solving problems or, for example, uh, discriminating the faces of other people, they may be using slightly different brain areas. Okay, so and you would use some of this information then to, to test it again with the children who appear to have recovered from autism to see if those brain areas now look, if you like, normal. Yes, exactly. Uh, and, and we have some of those data, but they're not fully analyzed yet. What we do have is data showing what kinds of intervention they had when they were young and really demonstrating that academically, socially, in terms of language, uh, they really are indistinguishable from, from typical children. They do have some psychiatric vulnerabilities. Um, they do tend to have some vulnerability to anxiety, to attention problems, and some of them uh, may have some tics or depression. So they, um, they do have some vulnerabilities that a typical population wouldn't have, but they're still very mild compared to, uh, you know, the life of somebody with significant autism. And I suppose the big question is what interventions did these children receive when they were young? Um, so the, the data from that part of the study are not published yet. Uh, what it's looking like um, is that the children who received... Um, Early, the earliest intervention uh, in the third year of life, um, many of them started intervention between the second and the third birthdays, and more of them started intervention that early than the children with high-functioning autism who are doing very well, but still have significant autism. And it also looks like a greater percent of them got applied behavior analysis therapy or ABA therapy, and they also got more hours of ABA therapy. That's very interesting because it's, it's the ABA therapy that parents, many parents of children with autism, have been really pushing for the, the state to provide. So your research seems to indicate that ABA does work. Um, there's there's about 30 years of, of um, good, solid literature showing that uh, ABA, it does work. And uh, it really it works for all children, whether optimal outcome is in the cards for them or not. So even children with severe autism and global developmental delays can certainly make uh, progress with, with good intervention. And, so, and you know, I should say that the optimal outcome that we're documenting is not the only good outcome that one would hope for. Not every child will, will recover, even with, with the best uh, ABA Absol therapy or other absolutely. therapies. Absolutely. What percentage do you estimate of children with autism can recover? Um, so this is a difficult question. It, if, if I had to guess just from my clinical experience and from some prospective studies that we've done, it would somewhere be between somewhere uh, between 10 and 25 percent. That high? Um, that high. But, uh, but even the ones who can't lose their autism features can still, you know, many of them do very well.
And uh, Professor, can I ask you, I mean, the children that um, have taken part in the study, how severely um, affected by autism were they at the beginning? Because I, I know a sceptic might say, ah, well, listen, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe those children were just a little right. slow in learning to read or write or speak, I suppose. Right, sure, and and we we do get that response all the time. We were very careful. Uh, we we got home videos when they were available. We got early reports on the kids, and many of the kids we saw ourselves when they were age two and three. Um, and all of those data, both the prospective and the retrospective data, suggest that they were just as severe uh, as the kids who now have high functioning autism. They were fully autistic. Fully autistic. And OK, we've talked about the training that they received. That's obviously a big factor. What mm -hmm. other factors are at play there? I mean, I suppose the question is, can every child recover from autism if they get intensive enough training? Or are there other factors at play? Yeah, well, the answer is, unfortunately, certainly not. Most children cannot move off the autism spectrum, even with the best intervention. And, you know, in 40 years of clinical work, <coughs> I've seen it's probably thousands of children by now who got the best possible intervention and the parents were the most invested and and did absolutely the best for their child and some of them remain severely affected by autism and most of them remain affected by autism even if it's not severe so the answer is it certainly has to be more than the intervention um, we and the answer is we don't know what makes a child capable of moving off the spectrum. It has to be something biological. It has to be something in the brain. Uh, but we don't know yet what that is. OK, well, listen, it's really fascinating research. And thank you very much for joining us from uh, Galway this morning. Thank you for having me. Thanks.